Hello and welcome back and that's right we're continuing our look at different multimedia client applications for Amazon Fire TV and today we are looking at Plex versus MB. Now this is one that I've talked about in the other videos for quite a while because I think this might be one of the tightest comparisons between all of these apps. We've looked at Synology's DS video, QNAP's Q Media, and more recently Jellyfin and all of these applications were all going up against Plex because Plex is kind of largely the, the market leader. And now they're not really holding that title the best they could. You know, there have been layoffs. They have talked about the company having slight financial issues going into 2024. But when it comes to comparing them against all of the other apps that we talked about thus far, they're still pretty much the king because of the level of services they offer on this either free or paid premium service. Now, before we go any further, it's worth highlighting we are accessing multimedia on a couple of different NASs. Now, we go here, go onto our desktop. You can see here on the screen, we've got a couple of NASs side by side. So on the left hand side, we've got the client application running on a Synology NAS here. On the right hand side, we've got MB running on a QNAP. It won't make any difference to how these are going to come out, but it will just easier to have them on different NASs because a few things when you're comparing these two are worth highlighting and more importantly differentiating from when compared to when you are using that amazon fire tv user interface because these are client applications these are what you install on your fire tv or your apple tv or your android tv your phone your tablet your playstation your what Ever. These are what you see if you access the server via the web browser. This is the full control interface. You will see a lot more control here. And when it's come up, when we've talked about a lot of different NAS systems in the past, and we've talked about testing them on Plex, I think it's worth stating that managing um, this, uh, a Plex media server is nowhere near as good, I would argue. Um, as managing an MB server there. If we look at the server here, we manage this server here, we can have a look at the settings, and they're all fairly standard stuff there. You know, we've gone through it before. There are controls, everything from changing the multimedia in, in recent updates to uh, Plex's um, background engine. You were able to do lots of stuff with making my CPU hurt, and then from there, changing the um, Plex transcoding um, choice uh, of graphical onboard embedded graphics or graphics card and stuff and there's a decent amount of control i've got to say but i tell you what that absolutely pales in comparison to the controls of mb the controls on mb are insane the sheer level of customization and controls afforded to you in mb is just insanity and with the apps and services you can add on customizations in the graphical user interface the works so although we are focusing on amazon fire tv and how it handles both plex and mb i do think it was worth highlighting that when it comes to customization on the back end mb really does have a strong base to work with there but one of the other reasons that a lot of users myself included compare plex and mb is simply that neither one of them is completely free now the extent towards what is free and what is paid for will differ depending on them both but when you look at plex you can get plex for free on a number of different apps and devices so to put that into perspective if we scroll down here on this is an article this will be linked in the description over on nas compares you could see that jellyfin sorry not jellyfin uh, plex is available on pretty much everything there's only one platform that you can't get the client for plex on and that's linux but then mb covers a lot of those bases as well but what you do also see is a lot of recurrence of this five dollars or license uh, or server license now what that means is on some platforms including fire tv which i'll show you later on you have to pay to get the full version or you have to get a premium account from mb now that is still the case for plex indeed plex passes ranging from 499 to 39 uh, uh, nicker a year to 190 nicker lifetime again this isn't something that mb doesn't have they've got it for 499 weirdly it's more expensive annually um on mb for the year but the lifetime costs are largely identical to one another but what you get for that money and what these can run well 
you have access to some platforms, although arguably Plex is available for free on a lot more platforms than on MB. And then when it comes to the NAS devices themselves, MB and Plex is available on largely the same number of platforms. It's only when you look at the bells and whistles and the services that you find out what can be done. Because Plex and MB, to, in order to financially uh, support their service, hint, hint, much like we do at NAS Compares here on the right, but on in the middle here, you can see that a lot of these apps and services are much, much better than the free or um, at least controllable than the completely free Jellyfin. To do that, they need subsidy. And one of the ways they've done that, of course, is with these licensing options. But it does mean that certain apps and services within Plex and MB and certain you know, hardware services such as hardware transcoding or add-on services such as live TV, trailers and other crawling of data online is behind licenses. And arguably between the two of them, Plex puts more stuff behind licenses than MB. MB has the license program, but Plex puts more things behind that. And then MB, as you'll see later on, double down by giving you extra things that you don't get on Plex, such as plugin extras, such as theme customization, and more. But these um, kind of resources are all linked below in the description. But for now, let's head back into the Amazon Fire TV user interface there. And the first thing we're going to look at is MB, because we've looked at Plex several times in this series, so you may already be okay with it, but don't worry, we'll be coming back to it later. But when we go into MB, you'll see that the user interface does seem just a little drab. It's a little boxy, but I'm pleased to say that there is a decent level of customization afforded to that. So everything with the home screen layer can be changed out quite easily. Uh, the general display, the theme, there's lots of different theme options there. And although they're mostly color based, you can add further additions to this on that desktop. So, for example, if we just go for teal for the hell of it, uh, from there, we can also change those uh, themes seasonally. We can show backdrops of files that we're looking at as we browse through. We can do a lot of customization there with regards to that display. Something that is, although a little bit available on Plex, it's by no means as available as it is on MB there. Now, again, when it comes to playing back, we'll come back to that later on, but all of these do make nice, interesting changes onto those user interfaces. So, for example, if we look at the file, the matrix there, we can now look at that. We've got that image there in the background. We've got chapters, recommendations for other things on our system. If we go and select an actor. Let's select Keanu Reeves there. And it's gonna obviously crawl that data from the movie database there. And now it's got that information, we find out more about him. If he's in other movies on this system, it will find them. Case in point, we've done this before. If we go into, say, Reservoir Dogs, and we find Quentin Tarantino on there, select Quentin Tarantino, go to the bottom, and other movies on this system that he is in will appear. It's a nice, it's an interesting layout, and it's very, it does feel very responsive as well. The same goes if we look at TV shows, such as Taskmaster here. Everything's all sectioned out. Everything's all broken down lovely and it's a nice easy to look at user interface now if we go into plex and see how that loads up bear in mind i am using a plex pass here so there may be certain things you see here that aren't available on the non-plex um non-plex free service but i will state the add-ons for plex are in the plex pass like for example them now adding you may have noticed there links towards other stuff happening these days um, mentioning like the barbie movie and spider-verse and stuff like that these are things that you can turn off but by default they are all on the same as the title service for finding music from the shows you're watching and again these are all good and i think you know there are some users that will like them but i think most users would agree the bulk of Plex users do not use a lot of these services and they're more interested in enjoying their own multimedia. Now, if we go into the settings menu here at the top of Plex running on the Fire TV, sorry, we'll go to the left-hand side, not reset the customization, we'll go down to the settings. We're able to see that there is, you know, a decent level of customization. There is a lot of things that we can adapt here. And this is one of the weird areas of contention between Plex and MB. And that is MB on the you know the desktop that I showed you at the beginning of this video had an enormous amount of customization. But the client 
if we go back into MB very, very quickly, the client doesn't have a similar level of customization. You can obviously change things from within the uh, client app running on your Fire TV, but that's really it. There's not, you don't have a lot of control over the server, which is arguably that you wouldn't want to give a lot of people access to the server, but I would quite like to have a little bit more of an analytical control of my playback of multimedia. There's some good options here for skipping and how things are going to be displayed. And frankly, it does rival Plex in a big, big way. But there are just some small options that are only available on Plex and arguably portrayed better on Plex as well. So as good as MB is on the desktop, when it comes to customization and control, the minute we move on to the mobile app, the client applications, I should say, I think a level of control and presentation is actually better on Plex in terms of what you can control, what's happening. Most of these options are available on both, but crucially, not all. And that's what I mean about the level of control with Plex on the desktop doesn't beat Jellyfin, but vice versa, things are slightly different. So now let's talk about playback. Let's head back in, and this time we're going to play a file in MB. <coughs> Sorry about that. Now, MB has a feature built into its playback that I would argue I wish every single media server app had. And I'll get onto that in just a moment, but if we go ahead and play a file, so we're just going to, as usual, select ourselves a file. Let's change things up a little bit. Let's go for a slightly different file, seeing as we've gone through this a billion times. So let's go in, let's play ourselves a little bit of Father Ted, shall we? This is an old school file. It's going to go and play back that file, as you can see, in trial, because for Fire TV, you still need to either have an MB Premium account or pay for the app for full access on the uh, on the Fire TV. That is a real bummer, I think, for a lot of users there. Now, if we pause that file ever so slightly, we can look at some of these. Now, I like the fact the logo's at the top left of whatever you're watching. That's a nice, sneaky little touch. I'm a big fan of that. The stats menu, if we go into it, we can change the available bit rate being afforded to this file if we're on limited data connections. And again, that can be automatic if need. Change the resolution of what we're seeing there on screen. We can go ahead and zoom into certain elements of the image. Uh, again, quite strange, that one. Um, change the playback speed, whether you want to repeat it. Playback corrections, if you've got any issues, it can run diagnostics, which I think is pretty darn good there. And finally, there at the bottom, my favorite, stats for nerds. Find out loads of information about the file you're watching, what's going on with the existing bitrate, what's the player. And if you're someone like me that really likes to dig deep into the media you're watching, that's such a lovely feature to have from the comfort of your sofa. So coming out of that, we can look at the playback on Plex. Let's head in there. And again, Plex is pretty darn good. You can definitely see they have spent serious money on that. And there again, I'm not sure how I feel about these connected service things. I know there are users that might like them. I'm not one of them. Um, but if we go into the TV shows tab there and go into Father Ted for the hell of it there, select whichever file we find there at the bottom. Just gonna, and again, we've got those slight delays, but I don't know how much of that we can blame on the playback of the file over the local area network and the caching of metadata on the Fire TV, because this is uh, uh, a couple of generations old Fire TV there, but the skip intro option, lovely stuff, but again, that is a Plex Pass Extra. Um, if you go to the bottom there, you've got the similar options that we've already discussed. So for example, changing back the bitrate, but what I quite like is you can also specifically tailor to the conversion quality of the picture something i'm surprised mb doesn't have readily available yes you can configure it in the options i know in playback settings we can have a look down here and again you can change that quality these are pretty much evident we just saw in terms of control but it feels a little bit more user friendly it feels a little bit more sofa friendly as well not loads but just a bit now again this isn't going to rival stats for nerds. There's a little bit of information there, but I'd want more. And I know that's just me. Overall, I think the playback of the file seems a little slicker on Plex. But I think the level of control at, um, and the level of information provided on MB is indeed better. Although that whole skip intro, skip to next episode is quite nice stuff. And although they are available on MB, you do have to specifically make your way into the MB individual settings in order to take advantage of those. Should I go all the way to the top, go back, 
go into your settings menu there and find out more. The layouts of these are pretty darn good. But I don't know, I, I, I'm, I'm a fan of all these different viewpoints. I'm a fan of having that level of customization and control. But I know that's not for everyone, unfortunately. And I do think the normal GUI of MB isn't quite as good as the one where you dig into individual um, services. So if, you, for example, you go into movies, I like the suggestion favorite trailers, the kind of XMB style menu of top and down. And I know that there must have been a way to integrate this into that main user interface there better than it is. But I'm not a UX designer, so I shouldn't really poke fun. Overall, between these two, I would argue that, again, this comes down to the features and services you want. The level of control um, is, you know, admirable on uh, MB there. It is very, very good. And the level of controls that you can do outside of playback are very, very deep, as I've already alluded to there. Um, I think Plex has clearly spent a little bit more bunts, I would say, if we make our way back over to the uh, desktops here. I think Plex is definitely the one that spent a little bit more time on those client applications than MB. But then MB just gives an unparalleled level of customization and control that if, you know, if you're prepared to spend a bit more time configuring your server, you will get the very best server for your needs and therefore it will mean that when you are enjoying it on your client applications you won't need to worry about customization and control because it will all have been done at source and then ultimately between these two although they both cost money and they both got their own little price tag at the moment i would say for those that take their multimedia seriously it's still going to be mb for Fi tv and indeed most other devices if you are someone that wants a slick easy no hassle experience for you your family members and more plex is still the best bet out there right now and although again they're going through a little bit of a state of flux at the moment and no doubt the likes of mb and jellyfin are benefiting from it arguably between all of them i've got to say plex is still for me the slickest option in the market right now it doesn't have the level of control of most but it's still the slickest thank you so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed this video again i might have one more part in this series to go where i'll start talking a little bit more about how all these different tools compare maybe looking at uh, recommended ones such as if you want to see certain applications on fire tv before we move on to other platforms like apple tv and android do let me know or of course roku is another big one too thank you so much for watching have yourselves a great week and i'll see you next time